Hey everybody, hope you're having a great day. As I've found out running this YouTube channel, people want what they want. Some of my viewers want their system to look more like Windows. Some of my viewers want their system to look more like Mac OS. Some of my viewers don't even want a desktop at all. They want a windowing system. Or they want GNOME, or they want KDE. That's one of the beauties of Linux, and that's one of the reasons I started this channel, is because there are so many options out there. But sometimes, I put information out and it just gets overlooked. That's what I want to touch base on today. But before we get started, I want to thank everybody. We're at 19,300 subscribers. And I do want to remind everybody, you can become a member to the channel now for just 99 cents. Starting January 1st, 2023, the MVP, VIP, and Pro versions of the memberships will be gone. And those perks will drop over to the 99 cent membership level. It's a great way to support the channel and a great way to support content you like. Also, I would like to thank my two newest members, Person Yoon and Grim Jaeger. Thank you guys so much for becoming members to the channel. You don't know what that means to me, and your support of the channel is overwhelming. And thank you to all the other members who have stepped up over the last month, month and a half. And of course, thank you to those that have been with me the longest. You guys just don't understand what this support means to me. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Now, when you talk about people, new people coming over to Linux, you've got some that want their system to look more like Windows. They will even go through the painstaking task of customizing their system to look just like Windows. Or they'll go download something like Linux FX11 that pretty much lies all over its website saying you can use it just like Windows, just download it, and it looks like Windows and acts like Windows. And I'm not even going to go over this because I've beat it like a dead horse, but stay away from Linux FX. Then you'll have people that'll continually go online and look at these different ways of making your system look exactly like Mac OS. My question is, is if you want it to look just like it, why not just stick with it if that's what you're already using? But there are some different distributions out there, especially for beginners who are just now coming over, that make things really simple. I'm going to focus on ones that look more like Mac today as opposed to Windows because I really am not big on making my Linux look like Windows. Understanding that Mac OS aesthetically is a lot better looking in my opinion than Windows. You may have a little bit more of a workflow issue on Mac as opposed to Windows, but I just like the overall look and feel of Mac better than I do Windows. I just think they do a better job at it. So what we're going to do today is revisit a couple different distros, four actually, that if you're a beginner to Linux or you're a newbie, uh, because I do get these questions in my comments sometimes, hey, I'm brand new to Linux, what would you recommend? There are so many different ones out there I could recommend. I'm not going to go with just the regular, hey, try Linux Mint or MX Linux. Everybody here knows that if a newbie asks me, hey, which distro should I try? I'm going to tell them to go download Garuda and give it a shot. And then my comments blow up with everybody going, are you nuts? Don't recommend Arch to people. That's just me because I used it, haven't had issues with it, and it was pretty simple and didn't need no rocket science books to keep it up and running. It's still running on a laptop right now with absolutely no issues. So if you're new to Linux or let's say you've been in Linux for a while, but you want to change, you want something that's easy to use that you can switch to and you're not going to have to jump through a lot of hoops. These are four different distributions I think you like. And the kicker is, I have even thrown in a BSD flavor of an operating system that you can check out. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. The first operating system we're looking at today is Elementary OS. Now, this is the Pantheon desktop environment, and it's based on Debian. It used to be based on Ubuntu, but no longer. As you can see, it is a very beautiful desktop. You've got your dock down here on the bottom. You've got your single panel up top. It gives you that Mac OS feel. So if that's what you're used to, you would feel really comfortable inside this operating system. If you come up top here and click, you've got your power. You've got your user account settings. And of course, you can lock or log out. You've got your battery level, your notifications. And then, of course, you've got your sound. And if you come over here to the center, you do have your calendar. And then you can set up any events that you have and it would give you notifications for that and then if you wanted to come over here you could click on applications and you got this that drops down and kind of shows you your applications and as you see it's got a very beautiful notification sound and lets you know there's 15 available updates 
So I'm going to go back over here. You've got your App Center right here, which we're going to look at in a second. You've got Calculator, Calendar. You've got a mail program that's integrated right into the system. If you click on that and open it up, you can connect an account real easy. And as you can see, it goes along with the theme. It's got a really beautiful theme to it. So let's close out of that. Let's go back over to Applications. You've got your File Manager. Let's go ahead and open that up. And when it opens up, it's got a consistent theme with the rest of the operating system. When I do talk to people, they say sometimes one of the things that turns them off about Linux is that the themes don't match across different applications. And you will have that, especially if you're running GTK themes in like KDE or something like that. But Elementary has worked really hard to make this a very integrated feeling operating system. You've got your usual suspects over here and then you've got your home folders right here. So what we're going to do real quick is we're going to go ahead and close out of that. Go back up to Applications. You've got your Multitasking, View, Photos, Screenshot, and then your System Settings are right here. We can go ahead and maximize though. So there's a lot of things you can do here. You've got your Applications, Desktop, Language, Mousepad, Touchpad. Let's go ahead and minimize that. That's one of the things I don't like about Elementary is when you do maximize it, it kind of lags a little bit and it's so spaced out. But, you know, there's different strokes for different folks. So maybe that doesn't bother you as much. And then if you come down here and click on System, it'll let you know that you're on Elementary OS 6.1 built on Ubuntu 20.04.3. I don't know why it says that because it is based on Debian now according to all the documentation that's out there. So maybe I need to go check on that. So if I've misspoke, I do apologize. And then you could check for updates down here. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that and come back up to applications. And if you scroll over a page, you've got your terminal videos, you've got your web. And let's go ahead and open up the terminal because what I want to see real quick is if they have HTOP. And they do have HTOP out of the box. Now the Pantheon desktop environment is using about 870 megabytes at rest of the 3 gigabytes I have issued to this machine. So it's a little heavier than your XFCEs and things like that but it's still probably lighter than GNOME, in my opinion. If you've got a different take on it, let me know in the comments below. And then if you come down to the bottom, you do have a dock. You've got your multitasking view, your web, mail, tasks, calendar, music, videos, photos, settings, and then the App Center. Let's go ahead and open that up. And right here is where you're going to get your software or applications that you want to run on elementary OS. Failed to fetch updates. Now, I don't know why it didn't fetch the updates, but we will ignore that. And if you come over here, you've got accessories. Let's go ahead and click on that. Shortcuts and wing panel, and then you can go back home. Development, code, feedback, terminal. And then you could obviously do searches up here for applications that you want. But I do know that until you get it installed, in the App Center actually updates itself in an installation. The selections you're going to be able to see up here are rather slim, but once you install it and it repopulates all the information it needs to, there's thousands of different applications you can download. So that's one of your options. If you're leaving Mac OS and you want to come over to Linux, definitely take a look at Elementary OS. Now the next one we're taking a look at is Pop OS. This has the Cosmic Desktop, which has a GNOME base. And it is based on Ubuntu. Now, there's a lot of talk in the community because Pop! OS has come out and stated that they're going to be creating their own desktop environment written in Rust. So there's a lot of excitement and a lot of people that can't wait to see that, including me. When you download this and open it up in a virtual machine or put it on a USB, this is the screen you're met with. And it gives you that real Mac feel. You've got a top panel up here. You've got your dock down here. It's a solid dock, of course. You can show launcher show workspaces, show your applications right here. Those will pop up. And if you notice right here, they actually have them in different categories. And you can actually create your own categories down here for applications if you want to customize that yourself. So Library Home lets you know you've got a calculator, calendar, files. There's your files. Let's go ahead and open that up. And as you can see, it's got a beautiful aesthetic to it as well. It's got the nice light blue against the dark background. I think that is beautiful. you got your usual suspects over here, your home folders right here. Let's go ahead and close out of that. Let's go ahead and pop that back open. You've got your Firefox browser, gear email. Same thing, kind of what you have in elementary OS that we saw earlier. You've got a weather, text editor, terminal. Let's go ahead and open that up. Let's see if they have HTOP. 
and they don't so we'll check top and if you check top right now we have three gigabytes issued to this machine we're using about 760 megabytes at rest so that's not too bad that's a little bit heavier than the one we just looked at solace os it was running about your mid sixes but still at the same time less than a gigabyte in my opinion is really nice um it's light it's not going to be hard on your hardware and you won't have to hear that fan running on your laptop let's open this back up we've got your settings let's go ahead and check out your settings and what you will notice is these are going to look really familiar they're going to look a lot like what we had in solace a while ago because the cosmic desktop is on top of gnome so you're going to have a lot of things that overlay and look the same but you've got your network bluetooth desktop applications right here you can go down here and set up your online accounts displays your mouse pad keyboard accessibility support about you can pull that up and it'll let you know you're on pop os you're on a ryzen you're running pop os 21.10 at 64 bit and the gnome version on this one's a little newer than what we were looking at in solace this one's 40.4 and it's on the x11 windowing system so let's go ahead and close back out of that let's go back down to apps and we will go to office you've got the full libre office suite in here that comes handy right out of the box you've got your system apps advanced network manager power statistics startup applications and your system monitor then you've got some utilities over here you've got extensions you can add document scanner screenshot videos show workspaces so let's go ahead and get out of that if you come up to your top panel you've got your wired connection it tells you how much time you have left on your battery and then of course settings and then your power off or log out and then you do have the tiling function on here now i want to go ahead and show this to you real quick let's say you opened up your file manager let's open up the terminal and we're going to go ahead and open up firefox and as they all three are open and on our desktop if you come up here to tiling and turn that on it tiles them all for you so i have my terminal right here i have firefox right here and then i have my files right here and then as you open other windows it'll actually adjust those so they fit so that's one good thing I do love about Pop! OS, and you can get that tiling feature on some other operating systems, but the integration that Pop! gives it is really stunning. Now, if you wanted Firefox to be over here, all you would have to do is grab it, bring Firefox over here. Let's say you wanted to put it right there. You could drop it right there. Then this right here would drop down, and then you would have your file system over here. Or you could go ahead and make Firefox separate like that and then you could of course move this over here if you wanted to so i mean you can adjust these whatever way you want to and it'll automatically move them around i really like that feature and if you download pop os i suggest you play around with it a little bit and get used to it so i'm going to go ahead and shut that off and let's close out of all of these applications and then if you come up to the center you've got your calendar right here as you set events they will let you know right here what your events are and you can also set up your weather right here if you wanted to you could go ahead and let's say we were in dallas texas i'm gonna go ahead and set that up for dallas love field and as you can see you get a nice weather app right here now you would probably have to go in and change that temperature unit over to fahrenheit if you're in the united states because that's what we're used to now if you're overseas you would probably want to leave it on celsius so we will go ahead and close out of weather and if you come back up here now when you open that up your calendar's here and you've got your weather right here now any notifications you get in your system will be right here and if you're in the middle of maybe a zoom call or something like that you can just click on do not disturb and it won't bother you while you're doing your work so let's go ahead and close out of that and then over here you've got your workspaces that you could pull up you can add more here if you would like and then of course your applications that pull up just like they do if you click on show applications down here there is a setting in settings that if you want to shut that off and you want to take those away from there and just kind of clean that bar up you can that's truly up to you then of course you've got your show launcher show workspaces applications there's firefox there's your files we already looked at that there's your terminal and then of course install and then settings and then what people really love about this distribution or this operating system is the pop shop it is probably one of the better looking ways to get applications and software in any linux distro that's out there let's go ahead and maximize that you've got a 
explore your horizons and unleash your potential right here. And then down here, you got your pop picks. You've got Lutris, Slack, Telegram, Desktop, Meld, Peak. You even got Steam. And then you can scroll down and you've got different categories. You've got audio, communications, development, finance, or you could go up top and do a search. You could go up here and you could click on OBS Studio. And there's OBS Studio right there. You click on install. Oh, we're not going to install it because I'm in a virtual machine, but it automatically starts installing. You don't get much information about it. And then we could go back over here. And if you wanted to go down, let's say finance, you open up finance. You've got Bitcoin, Ebok, Electrum, G Bonds, GNU Cash, GNU Cash. So you got several different ways to get applications right here in the pop shop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And I do recommend that if you download Pop OS to take a look at it, poke around in that pop shop for a while. You'll definitely be happy. And speaking of shop, you need to get on over to the eBus Central Store and check out the Linux merch that we have over there. This is a brand new Ubuntu design that we have. I think it's beautiful. Zip on over to the store, check it out. If you see something you like, go ahead and pick it up. If there's something you would like to see on the store that's not there, please drop a comment below and we'll do our best to get it on the store for you. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna move on to the next operating system. And the next operating system that we're looking at is not Linux at all. It's Hello Systems or Hello OS. It's based on free BSD. And as you can tell, they have taken a lot of inspiration from Mac. If you look, you've got a nice bar up top, and then down here you've got your dock. And then you can come up here, you've got system. Let's go ahead and look at that. You've got about this computer. Let's open that up. And it says hello. Hello system 0.7.0 tells you the build number. It's based on the newest release of FreeBSD, which is 13.0. We'll go ahead and close out of that. And then you can come up here, you've got File, Edit, View, Go, Bookmarks, Tools, Help. You can right-click on the desktop, create new folder, paste, select all, show hidden, desktop preferences. You can go in here, change your background. You can adjust your fonts if you want to. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Then you come down here, let's go ahead and open up the File Manager. And as you can see, it's a very lightweight file manager. you got Documents and Downloads. And then down here, you do have a browser. You've got your feather pad. You've got utilities. Let's check out what utilities we have. We got an Android file transfer, calculator, calendar, create live media, logs, zero comp. You've got a device manager, remote system, install FreeBSD, and then a Q terminal. Let's go ahead and open up the Q terminal and let's see if they have top. They do have top. Right now, you're using about 398 megabytes of your RAM. That is extremely lightweight, but like I said, it is FreeBSD, um, and Hello Systems does take a lot of inspiration from the look of older Mac. But if it's something you think you might like, I suggest zipping on over, downloading it, throw it on a USB, and take it for a test drive for yourself. It's a decent little operating system. It is really lightweight, and it is really light out of the box. Your preferences pop up. You've got a boot environment, your desktop, sharing, keyboard, font, screen settings, mouse, shortcut keys. You can set up your users. And then, of course, your wireless networks. You could go in and handle that as well. And then if you pop up over here, you can click on that, date and time, and it doesn't really pop anything down. So that's just another one to take a look at. If you get a chance, zip on over, throw it on a USB, put it in a virtual machine, and take it for a test drive. Let's take a look at our next OS. And last but not least is Ubuntu Budgie. I know if you've watched any of my videos previously, I give Ubuntu a hard time. But the people that are putting together the Ubuntu Budgie project are doing a really impressive job. Now what I like about it is they give you a welcome screen when you log in or you download it on a USB or open it up in a virtual machine. This is what you're met with. You get a beautiful welcome screen. It basically gives you an introduction, features, getting started, installation help, install now. You've got an online store, you've got your community, get involved or donate. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, but I do recommend that if you do give this a test drive, check this welcome screen out. It's very, very handy. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And now that we're closed out of that, you can see it is a very beautiful desktop environment. The Budgie desktop is great. If you look up top, you've got a single panel up top. It gives you that Mac feel. Its transparency is nice. You click on that, you've got time and date settings, you've got your calendar. And then, of course, you've got preferences right here. Show date, show seconds, use 24-hour if you would like to. 
you click on show calendar, your calendar pops up. I love the theming of this. It's really beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and close out a calendar up top here. You've got your power off or log out. You've got your sound settings, battery, internet alerts, notifications. Then you have this little hamburger menu. It's welcome to quick note. Text will be saved automatically while typing. So you go up here and say uh, appointment tomorrow and then just drop that down you can take little notes right there you've got your desktop environment scroll over panel you can add if you want to you can take them off if you want to you can add all the way up to i believe eight you can set that up to your needs or your wants and then over here you've got the budgie logo if you click on it it drops down your different applications right here you've got additional drivers additional network configuration solitaire archive manager budgie extras backups your calculator you can scroll over you've got celluloid which is your for your pictures you've got films g parted g thumb image viewer you got the libre office suite sudoku software updater software sources and then right here where you can add applications let's go ahead and open that up it tells you right here welcome to software you can browse so we'll click on that let's go ahead and maximize that up so you all can see it and you've got your editor's picks right here. You've got like Blender and LibreOffice. And then recommended productivity applications, MailSpring, Brave Browser, recommended graphics applications, FFmpeg, things like that. So it's got a decent store on it. And then you could go up here and it would show what's installed on your system. And then, of course, you could come over here and do a search. I don't know with it not being installed if it'll do a decent search, but we're going to try. OBS Studio. And there's OBS Studio. It pops right up. And then when I believe when you click on it, you got the option to install. And then down here on Details, Sandbox System Integration, Localized in Language. So you're getting it from the Snap Store. It is Snapcraft. We'll go ahead and go back up. And then I do believe, yes, you get it from the Snap Store right here, which is 27.1.3. Or you could go to the Snap Store 27.2.1, which is the latest what they call cutting edge this one up top is stable or you could go down here and just get it directly from the debian repositories that's up to you so they give you a lot of different choices right there so i'm going to go ahead and close out of that that's a good looking store let's go back up here and let's go to the last page you got your system monitor text editor tilex let's open that up that's a tiling terminal but all i want to do is see if they have h top and they do and as you can tell, Budgie's a little heavier than the Gnomes and the XFCEs and things like that. Right now, we've got about 4 gigabytes issued to this machine, and we're using about 1.17 gigs at rest. That will go down a little bit with an install because we are in virtual machines, so you have a little extra RAM being used there. So, just a heads up. And then when you come down to the bottom, you have your dock, you got your Budgie Welcome, you got the Software Center, you got your Rhythm Box, LibreOffice Writer, LibreCalc. And then, of course, the file manager. Let's go ahead and open that up. And you get the same kind of blue against the dark that we've seen with the other ones. It's just a good-looking theme, and I think that's why a lot of people use it. You got your usual suspects over here. Then you got your home folders right here. So that's really just a quick look at Ubuntu Budgie. Another option, if you're leaving Mac and you want to come to Linux, just something to think about and something maybe to take for a test drive. Please do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. The more likes I get keeps me in YouTube's algorithm, which means the information you just saw in this video, if it was helpful to you, it can be helpful to somebody else. And subscribe. Doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, we are on three separate platforms, YouTube, Utreon, and Odyssey. And you can become members on all three. On YouTube, it's only $0.99. Cents. On Utreon, it's $2.99. And on Odyssey, it's $4. You can also buy us a cup of coffee. Maybe go over to PayPal and throw us a donation. Or go to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. All those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching my video. And I will see you in the next video.